everyone. What I'm about to present is an update on our 2020 release on Latin America's travel market that relates to what Sharutha just presented. These are the updated highlights for the region, and we are working to deliver full numbers to you soon. We've gathered data from Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, and Colombia for travel segments such as air, accommodation, car rental, and tour operators. On our last LATAM talk a year ago, we've discussed a very turbulent year, but we were optimistic for a brighter 2021, while still very cautious. And then came March this year, and we were hit by the worst wave ever, especially in Brazil, where the death toll reached in total over 600,000 lives. We had lockdowns and tourism was in a standstill position once again for about three months. But we believe the worst is now behind us. Although we are seeing some Omicron red flags, vaccination and booster shots seem to keep COVID manageable, allowing activities to resume in a more or less normal manner. Uncertainty is still present and we have to keep an observant position to see what's going to happen in the upcoming months. Most of the countries in our region have already vaccinated a large part of their population and have resumed international travel with more confidence. Some restrictions are still in place, such as vaccination passports and PCR negative tests. But once a border opening is announced, we see a surge on reservations to that country. We know that people are absolutely eager to travel and we are seeing some very strong numbers in this last quarter. Last year, due to the level of uncertainty, we have worked three different scenarios. The best case scenario considered vaccines globally available early in 2021 and a decrease in cases. In this scenario, the travel sector would recover above pre-pandemic levels as soon as 2022, when revenue would exceed 66 billion. We can say that this scenario is unfortunately out of sight. Then there was the realistic scenario where total gross bookings would reach 51 billion in 2022, considering the information available at that time. And there was the worst case scenario where Latin America would be unable to bring the pandemic under control in 2021, which was somewhat the case with total gross bookings projected to climb only to 46 billion in 2022. In this scenario, recovery to pre-pandemic revenue levels would occur beyond 2024, as we've seen globally. But what scenario are we seeing after all? If Omicron allows something close to realistic, even though we had a rough first semester due to another wave, the economy in the region is recovering faster than expected. The World Bank's forecast for growth in Latin America and the Caribbean in 2021 has jumped by more than one-fifth compared to predictions made just six months ago. The revised Latin America GDP growth forecast is now 6.3%, which represents almost a full recovery from the 6.7 GDP loss in 2020. In 2020, we saw a drop of 60% in total gross bookings in the region, which was actually a little better than what was registered worldwide. This year, we had good summer months, which are January and February for most. But then, as I've mentioned, we were hit hard by another wave that fully impacted the second quarter. Recovery, though, is showing some very positive signs, and the last quarter will reach record high numbers especially for leisure players. Corporate travel, while picking up, is still way below 2019. That means that we might close the year reaching 63% of total gross bookings compared to pre-pandemic levels. As for next year, we do deserve some peace and stability, but 2022 isn't going to bring that just yet. In Brazil, the second largest travel market in the region, we are going to have presidential elections which will turn the country into a political battlefield while nothing gets really done. This will certainly impact most economic indicators as investors wait and see how the situation resolves. Even so, we'll have significant total gross bookings growth, but we we'll still won't reach pre-pandemic levels. That will happen, hopefully, in 2023, confirming the realistic scenario. 
A positive trend across Latin America's travel markets is the continued growth of online distribution. Internet access is expanding significantly, and as a result, Latin American online travel revenue will recover more quickly than the overall travel market, as OTAs and suppliers capitalize on gains in internet access to attract Latin American consumers with convenient bookings and promotional prices. Revenue is expected to reach 23.5 billion in 2022, exceeding pre-pandemic levels. The vast majority of Latin America's largest travel segment, the hotel market, is formed by independent and family-owned properties that rely on intermediaries for online booking. Even though we've seen a rise on the share of direct channels during the pandemic, OTAs will still hold the edge over suppliers with a projected 53% uh, share of online gross bookings in 2022. In 2022, Mexico and Brazil will still represent the main share of Latin America's travel bookings, as well as online travel revenue. The two countries combined will account for 76 of total revenue and 78% of online gross bookings. We're going to talk a little bit more about these two markets, but keep in mind that the full report includes Argentina, Chile and Colombia. As for Mexico, COVID-19 put an end to three years of travel market gains as gross bookings climbed 5% to 24.4 billion in 2019. In 2020, total gross bookings decreased by almost 58% and will not recover fully until 2023, even though Mexico remained open for most of the pandemic, becoming one of the main international destinations in the region. Online penetration is currently at 41% and will reach 45% in 2023. Brazil's travel market has been on a roller coaster ride for several years and it's not expected to recover to pre pandemic levels until 2023. Bolstered by Brazil's robust internet penetration rate and expanding smartphone use, the country's online travel market will rebound quickly than its overall travel market and return to pre-pandemic levels by 2022, when revenue is projected to reach 8.7 billion. By 2023, one in two reservations will be made online in Brazil. So now let's discuss a little bit about some of the consumer trends we are picking up in Latin America for 2022. Everything Charuta mentioned globally is also relevant for the region, but we have some very specific ones that apply to our countries and region. So extended family is important in Latin America and close interaction is part of the daily routine for most. The pandemic has abruptly interrupted that habit and families missed quality time in the company of each other. Now there's an even stronger need for more moments and celebrations together, leading to multi-generational trips. From grandparents to grandkids, families will take vacations together and enjoy those missed experiences. It is very important that products and services cater to different family members' needs, allowing the whole family to have a good time. As Charuta mentioned, flexibility is a concept that became mandatory during these thriving times. We had to adapt and be flexible in almost all dimensions of our lives. From our jobs to exercising, flexibility was key to becoming more anti-fragile and coping with our daily routines. Work changed forever and we'll see more hybrid models, anywhere office, the increase of digital nomadism, and again, more flexibility in work formats, contracts, and schedules. Business travelers have learned that they can increase their quality of life and time with their family with less work trips. So business trips will become less frequent, more planned, with multi-activities in the same trip, and business people will value moments to enjoy. The line between business travel and leisure will become more blurred, and it won't be rare to see executives enjoying the destination during their free time, while it will be common to see a Zoom meeting happening by the pool. We have to prepare travel products to offer a good experience for this unlabeled and multi-purpose traveler that wishes to have the best of both worlds. There's no distinction between online and offline worlds, and this has become very clear during the pandemic. 
Consumers have learned to shop in new ways and it's not different for travel. Even though our travel online penetration in Latin America hasn't reached 50% yet, almost 100% of the consumers do something online when preparing or during a trip, such as search for information about the destination, online reviews on providers, a restaurant reservation or a vacation post on social media. Travelers are truly omnichannel and travel businesses have to be prepared to communicate through all points of contact in a seamless way. Track your clients' online behavior, otherwise you might lose a really good opportunity to close a deal. The low-touch economy has accelerated the digitalization of everything, including travel. We now see AI, machine learning, virtual assistants, blockchain, and even robots present in travel. And these technologies are becoming easier to use and cheaper. But what we see in Latin America is that the technology that really matters for travelers are those used to make their lives easier in a platform commonly used by them, such as smartphones and WhatsApp. So if you're thinking about improving customer experience or selling more, start there. Simple is the way to go. Technology is also relevant for payments in the region since most Latin Americans are used to pay installments and this is what actually makes travel possible for most. To sum it up, Latin Americans are used to crisis. Our region is frequently in a turmoil and we got really resilient, developing ways to plan, predict and operate in unstable scenarios. The proportion of the COVID pandemic is higher, but on the positive side, we know how to deal with adversity, making it easier to bounce back. We are already doing that, and with some culturally optimistic bias, we will certainly come out of this smarter, bolder, and better. It's time for our own travel renaissance. So after these research presentations, let's get the conversation started. Thank you.